What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a distressed effect in Revit. So when it comes to rendering, Revit is really good uh, at applying regular materials, uh, but that's only good if you have a completely kind of flat regular building. But what if you want to create some sort of a little distressed effect, add a little bit more realism, make it feel like the uh, room has already been used or something like that. So I'm going to be showing you on a couple of examples where you can create like an opening like this, where there's like a brick exposed brick wall and kind of the, 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 the finished layers have fallen off. So that's the first one. And the second one is just a little bit of a dirt uh, around the corner of the wall uh, in the room. That's also something that happens uh, from time to time. And it's something that you can represent in Revit. So I thought it would be interesting to go over how to uh, over achieving this effect in Revit. Uh, now, before we get into that, make sure to like this video. It helps me out a lot with the whole YouTube algorithm. And make sure to subscribe because while I create useful tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials and you don't want to miss any of those. And then finally, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video. There, I take the extra time to explore Revit's, uh, Revit's complex topics in depth. Uh, all of the courses there are several hours long, and there is a whole beginner to intermediate level course. If you're just getting started, that's the perfect one for you. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in, well, Photoshop. <laughs> now, usually I start off in Revit. In this case, we're going to be starting in Photoshop because we have to prepare our images for uh, for use. Uh, now, here, as you can see, I have this, well, brick image and it's kind of cropped out to look like it was from a cracked wall. Uh, and we do have to make some preparations for, uh, for, for this image to be loaded into Revit to have this distressed effect. Uh, now, the first step is going to be to uh, prepare an image that's going to be a mask. Uh, so for a mask, uh, what you need to do is you need to mark out with black everything that's going to be cut out and then mark out with white everything that's going to stay. That's, that's what makes the cutout. Now here, what you want to do in this case uh, is first make a selection around this crack or this brick opening. Uh, so for that, I can just go here and use the little magic wand to selection tool. Click just like that. And as you can see, it's just going to make a selection going all the way around the image. Then what you want to do is create a new layer here in the layers. Uh, and you want to fill that layer out with a uh, black color. So just go to your program. We can just use the little brush tool and brush in that uh, black color. And then uh, you can go to the selection tool, right click to deselect. Here uh, we seem to have like a little portion here which we might want to ma mask out as well. So I'm just going to reduce the size of this brush, make it hard, and then let's just remove that part. There we go. Okay, so once we have this, uh, the next step is to uh, go again to your magic wand, make selection, right click, and then you want to go to select inverse. So that's just going to select the inside of this uh, of this boundary. Now then you want to fill that out. Now again, you can use the brush tool or alternatively, you can just go back to the selection tool, any selection tool, right click, go to fill. Let's see. Okay, where is that fill? There we go. Okay, fill. And then you can use color or you can just go with white and click OK. And this is the image that you're going to create. Then right click. Uh, let's deselect that. There we go. So this is the image that you can use for your mask. Now, if you don't use Photoshop or you don't want to bother with this, I will be uploading all of these images to my Patreon page. That's the second link in the description. So you can get it there if you just want to get the images. Uh, next, let's go ahead and save this. So file save as and then I'm just going to save it here as a JPEG. Uh, now this is the exposed brick as you can see here for this corner distressed effect I've created a corner BW which means black and white so for the exposed brick I'm just going to say exposed brick BW for black and white and then we can click OK. 
Next, you can create a bump map. Now, you don't really have to, but you can if you want. It is just going to give you a little more uh, effect from your image. Now, for that, uh, what you need to do is go here and add a uh, black and white effect. You can perhaps go to vibrance and uh, turn down the saturation. Now, uh, in most cases, this isn't really going to help you much uh, because the difference in coloration uh, between the kind of the uh, the the elements that are kind of below or behind and the elements that are in front is quite low. So if you want to do this right, if you want to achieve a nice effect, what you can do is simply go inside here and just use the, let's see, the polygonal lasso tool perhaps for this uh, effect. And then what I would do is just perhaps create a new layer and then go and select all of these uh, these parts between the bricks. So just like that. Uh, make sure that here you set the selection box to kind of add to selection. And then I would just select all of the parts between the bricks just like this. Now it does take a while to make that entire selection but once you do this can just improve the the quality a little bit of the bump. Now if you don't care about that, if you don't think it's necessary then by all means <laughs> avoid this step. Okay, and as you can see, I have made that selection. So I'm just going to take the brush tool, perhaps make it a little larger, and then I'm just going to paint all of that uh, black. Now, you don't want to leave it black uh, like this. You can go and then deselect. So what I'm just going to do is go and turn down either the fill or opacity. So you just want to turn it down a little bit, just like that. Perhaps even more, perhaps just like this. And then you can take your background image and add another brightness contrast and then turn up the brightness there. So this is kind of the effect that you want to achieve. You want to kind of cut uh, just to make sure that there is a difference between the parts that are kind of inside and the ones that are popping out and having the ones that pop out to be the lighter color in this case, uh, uh, white or kind of uh, light gray. Uh, and to get rid of all of these kind of little edges, you can go back here to this layer. Uh, you can make a selection of that, turn that off, go back to this layer too, and then just simply hit delete, which is just going to get rid of those. And then we can deselect. And then I'm just going to go for the file, save as, and then let's save this image as a JPEG. And I'm just going to call it exposed bricks bump and save it. There we go. So once we're finally done with Photoshop, let's go to Revit. That's usually more fun, at least for my audience. And then let's go here to Models, to New. Uh, for the template file, I'm just going to choose the uh, architecture or the custom Balkan architect template. This is my custom template. If you want to get this template, you can find it on my website. It's going to be the third link in the description. So check it out if you're interested. It kind of has kind of ready to go uh, certain families just to make it a little bit easier to get you started when it comes to uh, working in Revit. Anyways, here we have just a kind of blank uh, project. Let's go straight to the wall tool. We can go with the 400 millimeter generic wall, place a segment there, go to the 3D view, just the default 3D view to see what we have. There we go. Uh, now this is set to realistic and then if I just select this wall and go into edit type and then go into edit, you can see that the category isn't really or the material isn't really set up here. So I'm just going to set the material to be gypsum wallboard uh, just because it's just going to give you give us a little bit of texture and then when we apply that brick I think it's going to look really really good. So let's just apply that. Click OK, apply, OK. There we go. So it does have a little bit of an effect. Uh, now it is really hard to see it like this, but when we render, especially then it's going to kind of uh, give it just a little bit more effect. But anyways, let's now apply that exposed brick. So this is uh, applied as a decal. So you want to go here to the insert tab. There we have the decal tool, place decal, as you can see. So you just click on that and then you create a new decal by clicking here on 
create new decal obviously so once you click on that you can go here to new decal uh, we can call this one the brick let's just call it like that and then uh, you have to make sure that all of these settings are set up so let's go to the source you click on this little button and then you can load in your image and i want my exposed brick image hit open there we go you can even set up the brightness to be brighter or darker i'm just going to set that to perhaps five i don't know there we go okay below that we have the uh, bump pattern and the cutouts now first i like to set up the cutouts you want to set that to image file as well then you go here to source uh, you click and then that's this exposed brick black and white for the cutout and then finally for the bump pattern you can go with image file as well go here to search and then use the exposed brick bump click OK for that there we go so as you can see we have these three images loaded in each in their respected field and then finally we have to go to our finish and instead of high gloss I just like to set it to matte okay so with all of this being set up we can just click OK and we have our decal and now as you can see you can just click so here it's going to say decal brick and if I just click it's going to place that decal here now if you don't see it that's okay it could be due to the view settings but uh, you can simply let's see here yeah it might be a little bit too bright here uh, for this image so that could be a problem so the best way to uh, view this is to perhaps uh, just go here to graphic display options let's see I think the lighting might be a bit too harsh let's see if it's not up to that you can always go just and use ray trace to see what that looks like and there we go we see our uh, brick pattern you can zoom in a little bit it might take a while for it to ray trace but as you can see we get that depth because of using that kind of darker lines and uh, the, the bricks so you have that depth effect it's all cut out so it does actually look like an exposed wall over here which is really really good uh, now here because of brightness it might be a little bit too bright so if I cancel out of that let me see see here it looks like the brightness is just cracked up too much we can go here to graphic display options or the exposure as well yeah let's just set the Sun a little lighter Yeah, so we can select this and uh, then go into edit there we go so we can set the brightness here to one click OK apply OK there we go now we can see that a lot better on this wall now one annoying thing that they find here uh, when it comes to working with these images uh, is the fact that it has this kind of frame around now you don't see that when you render if I set this to ray trace or if I were to render this you wouldn't see that boundary but you do see it when you work like this so one way to kind of get around that is to select this and then you can see that here this is a generic model and in the sub categories it says generic model uh, lines now here you have some additional lines which you can use so you can try overhead li lines and it's just going to look like this so that's kind of reduced uh, you can reduce it even further simply by going here to the manage tab going to object styles going to generic models expand that and here you can add an additional line so uh, what you can do is just insert a new subcategory we can call this one decal and then this one can be completely white just to make it blend in or perhaps gray and then instead of solid you can just go with dot or something like that like this apply okay and then when you select this you should have that subcategory here decal apply and as you can see it's even less plus it's gray so it's uh, a lot nicer it does show you kind of the edge of the image but not too much so I really like this effect and of course at any point if you want to make it larger you can just stretch it out and it's a little bit larger also you can turn off log proportions and then you can mess with it and make it all terrible but I don't like that 
So I suggest you keep the proportions locked. And for the second one, uh, is it's just the effect for the corner. So let's try that as well. Uh, I'm just going to go here to insert, go to decal. Uh, let's go to edit type. Let's duplicate this one and let's call this one the corner. Hit enter, go into edit. And then for the corner one, I'm just going to set a different image like the corner image open. Next for the bump, I, I'm not going to have any bump for this. And finally for the cutout, I'm just going to load in a uh, kind of uh, reverse image where everything except the kind of little corner dirt is uh, black. So I'm just going to click OK. Okay, again, and then we can place that and it's going to look like this. Now, obviously, it's a bit too small. So we can ex make that a lot larger. Let me select that, place it here in the corner. And as you can see, it's just going to add a little bit of dirt in that corner. It can look nice kind of if you want to make things look a bit more realistic, you can use tricks like this. And then also I would change the subcategory of lines to decal. And then it would look like this, which Again, I, I think it looks better. And then finally, when you render something like this, if I were to zoom in and let's try just re ray tracing it, just to see what that would look like. And this is the effect we have. As you can see, the wall is a little bit dirty at the corner. And then here we have that exposed brick. So I think it's a really uh, cool effect, which we can achieve in Revit uh, fairly easily. So there we go. Uh, if you're interested in more uh, useful tutorials uh, and courses for Revit, check out my website, the first link in the description, balkanarchitect.com. There I have over 100 hours of content when it comes to Revit courses, so uh, please check that out. Uh, there I can kind of go in depth into all of these complex topics within Revit. Also, if you want my project files, like all of these images and this Revit project file, you can find that on my Patreon page, that's going to be the second link in the description. If you sign up, you can get access to over 400 of my Revit files. So make sure to check it out. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I'll be back with another regular Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.